call me Fuego. 93 like me. Fire in the sheets, spending summers on the seas. Quedo, no way. to decide it all and like the desk was talking about it is neck and neck yet again another tie up at the top of the leaderboard and it really does look like we might be moving into that final round decide who walks away with over a million dollars papers in. i mean now the pressure really starts to build for all these teams it's hard to believe that we're at this point in the tournament that we have nothing but Aaron Gills left and then we're done after so many weeks of incredible PUBG action after seeing so many great teams, 32 of the best in the world going at it. We find out who is going to walk away with a ton of money, life-changing money coming through and the top of the leaderboard, six teams with 50 points or more right now. This one almost certainly going to come down to the wire unless somebody just wins like three in a row here and if, if, speaking of, if, if any of those teams in the bottom are going to come out, they need to win three in a row to have any hope at this point. Day trade and Jinji in some trouble right now. As you know, the fan bases are having a, a little bit of a heart to heart with themselves, trying to figure out what is happening. I mean, it's. It, let's just be real. It's not done, but it's going to be hard for them. Yaznaya, the center of the circle, so. We saw a little bit of fun in Yaznaya yesterday, whereas everybody was having to crush in, and we got an urban ending to finish it out. And has bumped into the same kind of space that Genji's occupying. Oh, this is a bad call. Gustav hits the first shot. Bale Frost did a lot of trouble. Tries to go for the drive-by. Does connect onto him, but it's turning into a problem. Snakers pops up. Pat caps it back behind it. Fuzzface steps out, trying to get the damage. Fuzzface, the last one up for his squad. Snakers just rolling through, flushing out everything around. But it's going to be the third parties that are coming in. It's going to be the Sonics that's just putting in work on this fight. Meanwhile, Zenith back behind Sonics, putting in some work into them. And somehow, Fuzzface being the sole survivor in the mess along this hill. Now more teams are going to have to move into entrenched points. Most notably, it's going to be day trade. T1 can continue to move up the hillside, so you should have an easy pass. But a freak of freaks in a little bit of trouble as they're trying to find some way to approach this. And they're going to have a lot of teams taking shots at them. You can see it's going to be Zenith, the beneficiaries, picking up two kills quite early. What a spray by Poonage with the Groza just ripping a freak of freaks asunder here. They are down to their last two members. EJ and Hansi are very beat up, throwing down smokes, trying to get those healths off. Three different teams now tied for first, and Division X looking to go after one of them. Infantry in a little bit of trouble. This grenade could be quite big. Going to bounce a little bit too far, though. Nice play using that little closed off bunker for more defense long k thinks that he has the read the bounce is going to go in but look at infantry repositioning around this realizing where their vulnerabilities lie at instead cresting the top of the hill long k going to use the smoke though play right up into their face and find an advantage to work with longsker caught up here's the vehicle knows that it's coming but division x playing this quite efficiently fergus getting some damage into longsker having to reposition away from it do note, no other teams really have vision to really third party into this. This is its own contained fight and one of the few places that this can happen. Long K just starting to take some sprays inside the smoke is now infantry having to play full on defense, leaning into smokes, trying to lean into some cover as now DXG realizes the flank point, calls it out, and it's going to be a nice reposition coming in and infantry, one of our teams tied for first down this early. That's a fantastic move by Neil T, and he gets away with it. He gets a bunch of damage, but survives. Gives the information to his teammates on the exact positioning of infantry, and they're able to swarm. Now it's over to Buriram. They continue to push. They push through a freak of freaks. They're down in 13th. A hot knife through butter there. Buriram is so, so darn good. And well, you never know. The momentum, once it starts to carry them, it's wind in their sails, and they become a real force to be reckoned with. Team Liquid trying to get away. Clib has been knocked. Tianba still looming around oh, them, no. but M200. Oh, Purdy, Purdy? Nope. They, they get up over the hill. They're going to hide behind those rocks well enough from Purdy's sight lines, although Clib is knocked behind that U.S. But it's not inside the safe zone. They still have to advance past this. Tianba's holding out shoot to kill, trying to make sure that they get a play out of this as well. You know, the fact that shoot to kill quite good with throwables and has a vision on where a potential res could be happening at, so they might opt into taking a couple of tosses. Instead, they're going to allow the res to come through. Here comes the throwables, landing right on top of it, but there is a little bit of a hillside. Pentalol gets the line onto a bees of the grenades, start to land right on top of them, but it's going to be some shots coming up from the four angry men who are in a gatekeeping position for this. Team Liquid in a lot of trouble. Clip going down now as well. 
two to kill, trying to buy this one out, get the shots into it as they know that they still have to contest against four angry men. Oddly enough, it's gonna be Jeans that's rolling up the hillside that might be in a point to either contest or just continue to loop around to the north. Looks like he's gonna to try to bypass 4AM's positioning and that's going to have to abandon. The other member for Team Liquid to the throes of what's going on between Tiemba and Shoot to Kill. Last member up for Tiemba, gonna spot off Shoot to Kill, gets the spray into one, but they do manage to spin back around and Tiemba now down and out. Well, the good news for Shoot to Kill, they have a little bit of time to get this Reds off. I say that, and Mexi comes up behind him. It's going to be Godby again, helping from up above to take Mexi down. Shoot to Kill almost losing Purdy. Look at that. He has literally one HP left in that Nox status. Jeans, Jeans? in the meantime, has gone up into Ow. the Stalber Ruins. I don't know how he got up there. He got past 4AM's defense line somehow, some way. Now Forever is looking in this direction, trying to see if he can catch Jeems crossing that area. He, it's a nice open field spot. It's a good read by Forever to know the terrain up here, to know that that's the angle that Jeems has to go through potentially. And this is what helped Jeems out a little bit in his journey, trying to make it to the safe zone. 4A got very much focus and a bead in towards shoot to kills positioning you can see in a little bit of trouble now t1 was kind of caught up looking a little bit more towards jinji's positioning and that's what allowed james to get into the spot while he is inside the last safe zone the new circle has popped and definitely favors sonic's positioning who's got themselves a nice compound to play from a lot of these teams are going to be repositioning along the stalbury hillside moving into this eastern hills where it's going to get a little bit more bloody you can see most notably in the north there's a much wide much wider open area that we're seeing a couple of these fights happening and most notably it's still multi-circle gaming Jin G taking some shots at each other while now t1 should be getting into a point where they get vision dong che waiting taking the shots at po and that's going to be him going down he was taking the shots into multi-circle gaming and so a quick exchange as third party high ground advantages are going to become a theme in this fight yeah, I mean, time and time again this weekend, we've seen P.O. get caught out in situations like that where he's tunneled on something and gets third party from the side. And for Gen G, they're getting sandwiched between T1 and MCG. I don't expect this round to last much long longer for them, barring some kind of miracle. Shinboy going to let loose with that grenade as he retreats. Get some, getting some help from 4AM again uh, is Zenith this time. So 4AM just working the teams on the bottom of this hill doing so much damage to them, putting so much, uh, you know, damage into the armor and the other utility that the teams have. It's really, really tough for them with the way 4M is playing. They're picking up a few points here and there. Star-Lord knocked for T1. Uh, Deng Che pushing down the hill to try to cut off either MCG or Gen G, whoever's coming up this hill. It's going to be Tank with the SLR looking that direction. Are they going to be able to get to Star-Lord? No, they are not. It's going to be the blue that finishes that off. Three up left for T1. It's turning into a mess on top of this hillside. Jinji gets eliminated. Lou gets vision onto T1. Spots it out as they're making their approach. Gets a little bit of damage into Aqua 5, but he's managing to hold it up. Him and Dong Chae trying to find some way to make this one work as they're right on top. They've got pincer points. They've got multi-circle gaming off to one side of them. Now just Dong Chae, the last one up for his team. Uh, He's in, a, he's in a spot, let's be real. Four and Green Men have the high ground and are really supervising everything that's been trying to go on. Multi-Circle Gaming were trying to push their way up there, but bumped into T1 on their approach on the hillside. Now it's just one member up in a problematic situation for T1. Question comes into play, is anybody going to get vision onto them or is it just going to continue to be the third party setup? You can see that Multi-Circle Gaming is evilly in a point, trying to maybe push into the last remaining member for T1. Meanwhile, you can see DXG making push into Sonic's positioning. Oh, we're seeing a little bit of a pick up there. Sonic not the last one. I'm not going to give it up just quite yet for his squad and continuing to do T1 things and try to find a way to make the worst situation favorable for them. Well, 4AM is going to barrel in towards Dong Che. They know that he is isolated out there after he picked up that knock. On to Evil Lee. They want to try to finish him off. Getting some good opening damage. He's screwed. Yeah, he's dead. There you go. Crazy. <laughs> Gonna finish him off. Uh, he's just, yeah, it was just nothing he could do. He's on a hillside and 4AM has so much control there. Back over to Xena. Still in this fight with Buriram. They're doing a been doing a pretty good job, but Buriram is so tough to dislodge. They're so tenacious. They're so furious. Their shooting is so good that they become a real problem. Even when they're in a really bad position on the low ground like this, they're able to land those narrow angle headshots just like that Edie gonna get the knock onto Poonage these guys are actually insane there's uh, it doesn't matter if you have better positioning you have to just weather a storm you're gonna suffer losses it feels like one way or another fighting Burram United 
Burram is always after the kill points, and they're just going to continue to be Burram. They're going to take a fight, and they're going to drag you down into the dirt with them. They're going to force you to play their way over and over again, and they find ways to make it worth. You're seeing the fact that a lot of these teams that are presently alive starting to stack together the kills. 4 a.m. holding up with 9. Zenith with 6 at this time. Burram holding down 6. Multi-Circle Gaming with 5. Really, Sonics, who've been just kind of chilling right now. They have the circle to themselves but they well they had the circle to themselves for quite a while they're the ones that have been kind of chilling because they haven't had a chance to really fight anything everything has been going on to the edge multi-circle gaming finally finding an angle trying to push up trying to find some way to really encroach their fortified defensive positions but it's going to be four angry men trying to dislodge zenith to the south so we have two different fights breaking out where all the teams are clustered well, Godby's got an AUG. He's going to get kickstart out in the open and take Zenith out. The second place team just got eliminated by the first place team. 4 a.m. Looking to put their foot down on top of the rest of these teams in this lobby. Mime gets a pretty decent grenade in there. Gets some good damage. Tank and Lingdu trying to work the sides of the rock. Summer, they're going to hold on to this. They're going to stick this res. Summer almost goes down to those frags does not fall. Shrimzy going to really cook one up. Is it going to be well-timed? Yes, it is. Going to get the finish on to Summer. So the Reds does not come through. Now it's a 2v2 with MCG and Sonics. On the other side of this, you can see it's Burwam trying to hold back the four angry men, but it's not going to go in their favor. 13 kills now for four angry men. They fought their way to be at the top of the leaderboard, and they are showing you why. Multi-Circle Gaming, Sonics still caught up in this fight, and that means that 4AM has control over all the rest of the circle. On this point, might kind of creep along with it, might try to find something else. Mime has a read on the position uh, to the north of him, getting an idea on what's happening with 4AM. This is all about trying to figure out how to move and then make your counter move, as there is still one more circle that's going to pop before everything shrinks down into that centralized point. A lot of this game is resting, waiting for that moment to happen, and it's just two seconds away. Where is the circle going to go? And a smidgen of Sonic's compound stays in play. Mime gets vision onto Lou, but the hillside's going to add in enough protection, but he does go down. Mime lines up the shots, and this game is starting to come a little bit more open. That was great patience by Mime, showing you why we call him prime time. Comes up big there. That is a bit of a dent in the armor here for 4 a.m. That is three left and they might be losing control of this we'll see losing control of that high ground godby had moved way down to the south of this circle shrimzy gonna wait this one out first it seems like sonic's kind of worried about mcg and then we'll worry about 4 a.m when we get to it but again 4 a.m in the driver's seat of this one 13 kills already in this game sonic's only a five mcg is six those two other teams put together don't even have as many kills as 4 a.m already has matt Throwing a smoke in to try to deny some of the vision for Sonics. Multi-Circle Gaming look like they might be opting to make their play. Are they pushing into Sonics positioning? Are they going to contest against four angry men? Right now, it almost feels like it could be a mutually assured destruction moment. Multi-Circle Gaming pushing in, trying to crest up, but Molotov's going to come out. Slow down the approach. The blue cresting in and making it oh so much more problematic for multi-circle gaming tank though feels like he's got the opportunity he's going to start leading the way mime still having to deal with harassment coming up from god v way off on the other side of the circle now the fight is starting to break in multi-circle gaming advancing in you can see tank just on the other side of the doorway forever starting to crest in getting a little bit of an idea on where lingdu might be playing from and tank opts to make a play towards the top of it spots out mime gets vision on him takes him down just one up for Sonics and a good read on how to counter move around that positioning. Lingdu now has to contest with Crazy and you can see Multi-Circle Gaming has an idea oh, what's going oh. on. Yet again, it is exchanged between the two of them. It's going to be forever. That's got the back of his teammates. Lingdu though, starting to get an idea of what's going on. Has to crest up, has to push forward. Multi-Circle Gaming goes down and now it is just Shrimsy. The last one up looking out, knows where Forever's positioning is, but has to fight against a high ground advantage for AM. Can he make something out of this? Looks like he's just going to feed it over the blue, and that's how we end it. Sonics managed to climb up the leaderboard, getting that tied for third positioning, but it's all going to be about four angry men. Back to back wins for 4 AM, looking to take home the final week of PGIS and be crowned our champions. They are firmly in control of this with double digit kills in the last two games on top of the wins.
Now everybody looks at them, Matt. This is firmly in control, firmly in their grasp.